Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. These are the words of Peter the apostle as he enters the home of Cornelius. But this was not always the thought or thinking process or even the emotions, feelings, or actions of the Apostle Peter. If we go up previous within this same chapter of Acts 10, we see that uh, Peter did not always feel the same uh, that Jews and Gentiles could worship together uh, or in the same congregation. Uh, it, would, it would seem that Peter needed a attitude adjustment. Now, this morning, because we don't have much time, I want to quickly tackle three points. We want to look at the man, the messenger, and the message. Now, if we look at the man, Cornelius, speaking of Cornelius, let's, let's look at the man, Cornelius. Cornelius uh, being a very devout, just upright man, just morally a good person, but still he lacked one thing. There are many today who believe that we can all get to the same heaven, but we can get there through different ways. We can serve whichever God we choose, and we can still make it to heaven. Apparently, those people have not read the conversion account of Cornelius, because even though Cornelius was a good man, a just man, a devout man, he even prayed to God, he still was not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Now, Cornelius was one who was searching for the truth, searching for how, what he must do to be saved. Cornelius, the man, lets me know that there are still people today searching for the truth. You have many people that say, oh, we live in, in some trouble sometimes. This is a wicked generation, the, the worst generation. We live in a time where they call right wrong and wrong right, to which I would agree. They say that the things we used to do, it won't work today. Door knocking may used to work. Inviting people to church and gospel meetings may used to work, but there's no way that will work today, not with the mind of the generation we live in, to which I have to address Cornelius. You see, Cornelius was one who was searching for truth. And see, wherever there is a searching heart, God will respond. This is why it is essential for us as uh, students of the gospel to not only study God's word and to live God's word, but to be willing to share God's word. You see, Cornelius lets me know that there's still hope. There are still people searching for truth. And if people are searching, I guarantee God is still sending. But are we in the going business? So now let's look at the messenger, Peter. Now again, Peter is the one that made this statement in Acts 10, 34 and 35, but again, he did not always feel this way. Peter had to be uh, what you call humbled. Peter had to come to the realization that not only is God the creator of all, but he is the savior of all. And how can God be the savior of all men if you aren't willing to share the gospel with all men? So now Peter is, 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 is on his way to Joppa. Peter decides to stop by the house of Simon, and he goes up on the roof about the sixth hour, and he begins to pray. As Peter is praying, he is caught up in the trance, and he has a vision. Listen, this is a vision, not a dream. Now, if this were a dream, we could assume Peter was asleep. Maybe he was a little tired. Maybe he wasn't in his right mind, but no, Peter had a vision, meaning he was awake, he was aware, and he was fully conscious, which means he knew what he was doing, he knew exactly what he was saying, and he knew who he was talking to. Because he even addressed him by name. He says, not so, Lord. So as Peter is having this vision, there's a sheet full of animals. And according to Leviticus 11, these animals would be considered common and unclean. The angel then says to Peter, slay and eat. To which Peter responds, a not so, Lord, addressing him by name. Not so, Lord. You see, I've never eaten anything common or unclean. Now, we don't know if maybe Peter thought this was a test. Maybe Peter was hoping to hear, well done, Peter. You passed the test. See, I was just testing you to see what you do, but that's, that's not the case. In fact, the angel said, what God has cleansed, let no man call common. Apparently, this happened three times. Not once, but three times, Peter is recorded telling God, no, 
Now, Dr. Scruple would say there are two things we can say, but one thing we should never say. You can say no, and you can say Lord, but you should never say no Lord. And here Peter is saying it three times. Brother Cody preached on uh, Jonah earlier this week, and he talked about how God would tell Jonah to go one way, and Jonah would get up and run the other way. And here I find it ironic we have Peter pulling a Jonah, and yet he's not even moving his feet. God said go, Peter said no. And you see, when we refuse to go where God has sent us, even though we're not moving our feet, we're still telling God no. And not only are we pulling a Jonah, but we're also pulling a Peter here in this incident, because God said, go ye, which we've heard time and time again, but this, this is true. Go ye does mean go me. And when you say, I'm not going to go, you're telling God no. So the messenger being Peter had to come to the realization as he's having this vision, I am sure he's not fully aware. He's, he's not fully understanding the meaning of the vision that he's having. But still, as the angel, after the third time, uh, the men come and then the angel says, go with them. The spirit says, go with them, for I, I, I've commanded thee. With no questioning, Peter gets up and he goes. And it's, it's amazing how Peter comes down. He's talking with the men. He begins to lodge with them. You can see the walls being broken down. What I mean by walls is sometimes as children of God, we put up these walls between us and the world. As good as a man as Cornelius was, I believe Cornelius would have been the perfect student, the perfect listener, the perfect person to have a Bible study with because he was searching for truth. He was a good man. He was willing to listen. He, he even went and gathered his family and friends. Here, here a man who wasn't even a member of the Lord's church, a, not even a Christian, out evangelizing, trying to share the good news of how to be saved. And here Peter is refusing to do so, not because Cornelius was a bad man, but just because he was of a different nationality. As Peter then goes to the house of Cornelius, we get the message. Not only do we get the message, Peter now gets the message. He says, as he opened his mouth, of a truth I perceive. I have finally come to the understanding that God is no respect of persons. You see, when it comes to race and nationality, God is no respect of persons. When it comes to sin and salvation, there is no difference. The same creator has to be the same savior. It's amazing to me how we, as members of the Lord's church today, and not, it, not necessarily speaking on race and nationality, sometimes it can be something so small and minute as just a scruple or a preference, or a difference. Well, I would invite him, but, but he's a Georgia fan. Surely he wouldn't want to obey the gospel. Well, I, I would invi I invite her, but, but she voted for Biden. Surely she wouldn't want to obey the gospel. You see, Peter was putting up these barriers. Peter was saying, because he doesn't act the way I act, worship the way I worship, I'm not going to be the one to evangelize to him. It's amazing how God would send Peter when Philip was right there in Caesarea. Why didn't he send Philip? Why did he send Peter? Because Peter was the one who had the keys. Peter was the one who had the message. Peter was the one who needed to come to the realization that God is no respect of persons. And if God is no respect of persons, then neither should we be. I want to close with this. Peter was actually the answer to Cornelius' prayer. You see, as members of the Lord's church, as students of the gospel, students of the word of God, we don't know who is out there praying and waiting for the knowledge that you hold about Jesus Christ. You don't know if you could be the answer to someone's prayer. So something so small as a difference, as a scruple, uh, as a different brand of clothes, as a, as a different hairstyle should not stop you from sharing the word of God. Brothers, in about three months, we will be graduating from MSOP. 
for the la almost the last two years, we have been told the task that is ahead of us, the, the mission that we have, the courage that we're going to have to have to stand on the truth. And no matter what persecution, no matter what ridicule, we're going to have to preach the gospel and preach the truth to all that are lost. Now, Peter didn't fully understand what Jesus was saying up until this moment. There's going to come a moment after we graduate and it's going to sink in. Will we be willing to stand? Will we be willing to go? Brother, there's a work and a charge ahead of us. Let's go to work. Thank you.